three, two, and one. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew, and you have found yourself once again at the Morning Hash. And thank you so much for being here this morning. Uh, I'm very grateful that you've decided to join me. Um, I'm just going to jump right into things. I'm going to try to make this a little more brief than the 20 to 30 minute videos I have been making. So I'm going to whittle down some of the information that we're going to go over today. Uh, I'm being a little quiet right now because the wife's in the next room asleep. So um, we're just going to jump right into it. We've got, what do we got on the docket today? We've got, we've got the Russia... Russia mess. Um, we've got some. Af uh, we've got some sports to discover or to, to, to discuss. I'm so sorry. I'm tired. Coffee time. Coffee gone. Anyway, we have some sports to discuss. Um, that's funny and not funny at the same time. And then uh, I don't know how else we're gonna go. Um, oh, we have an aggressive turkey. <laughs> so I hope that starts your day off on the right foot. But let's just let's just jump right in here to um, you remember uh, the whole Russia hoax. Remember that whole Russian thing when they were telling us that Donald Trump was a Russian plant and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, you know, here it is. The Twitter files, the Russia hoax exposed. The genesis started in August 2017 after Facebook suspended 300 accounts with suspected Russian origin. Turned out a lot of them were just like bots created by the Democratic Party. Basically, if you know that the Twitter files, if you know of the Twitter files i highly suggest you go look them up the twitter files uh basically prove that we all suspected well all common sense thinking people logical thinking people suspected is that um no donald trump was not a russian plant um and that the democrats all knew it on congress on the hill on the senate they all knew it and they all lied about it and are they being held accountable no no they're not no, they certainly are not. So I highly suggest you uh, go look up the Twitter files. Um, we that That's a lot of information. That's more than I can cover here in about maybe like a 15 minute window. Um, we may do a special. We may do a special on that, though. I'm going to start doing like one to two uh, days a week. I'm going to be doing some uh, exposés, if you will. Um, but let, let's stick with the let, let's stick with the, uh, the matter at hand here. Um, so the, we'll start off by reminding everyone about the um, the Russia hoax during the election and everything like that. And that didn't work. So what did they do? They went straight to war, right? And if you want to take a look at kind of the timeline of the war, let's go back. Ukraine crisis. This is from Al Jazeera. Ukraine crisis. Russians hope for peace as the world talks of war. Some Russians believe the West is aggravating the situation. I, I'm not Russian, but I agree with that. Most want an urgent diplomatic resolution. Now, this is back in January of 2020. This is one year ago, just about one year ago. Only first names have been used. Of course, of course. Nobody in Russia wants a war, says Ekaterina a 25-year-old master student at Moscow's Higher School of Economics. Everyone is quite worried that there will be a third world war and everyone hopes the conflict will be resolved peacefully, she told Al Jazeera. Uh, let's see, for Roman, a 53-year-old businessman, the current crisis is far from novel. He hails from a city known as Golovka in Russian and Horlivka in Ukrainian. He, in the self-proclaimed Donetsk, People's Republic, run by Russian-backed separatists, but now lives in Moscow. They're shelling there every day, he said. I talk to my former classmates in Don Donetsk uh, a lot, and they say that Ukrainians are shooting at Donbass every day, he added, referring to the conflict-ridden region where the DNR lies. As Western powers fretted over a significant Russian buildup of troops at the Ukraine border, fearing Moscow is planning an attack, DNR officials recently said there were some 120 thousand Ukrainian troops stationed near the line of contact with the Donbass, and more military equipment was arriving every day. People in Donbass have a negative opinion of Ukraine's leadership, said Roman. If you're being fired at every day, how would you feel? I can, I, I can certainly sympathize well. I'm not being shelled every day. My region isn't being shelled every day. But why would the Ukraine start shelling that area shared by Russia? 
Uh, let's see what else here. Oh, let's not forget this. This is just fantastic. Um, remember when Sean Penn gave his Oscar to President uh, Vladimir Zelensky, who is just an actor who was installed as a president in the Ukraine? Good Lord. And speaking of that peace that uh, the people in Russia want, and again, all of these will be linked down in the description. Uh, Zelensky calls Putin a nobody and dismisses the prospect of peace talks. Okay, so who is that a picture of? Joe Biden? Huh? <laughs> it was either Joe Biden or George Soros. Ukrainian, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has rejected the prospect of negotiations with Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin. He sounds like a good dude. Zelensky. I'm not saying Putin's a good dude either, but in an interview with Britain Sky News, which is broadcast on Thursday, Zelensky said that Putin doesn't want negotiations because he doesn't want peace. The Ukrainian leader said that he was convinced that Ukraine was just the first step for Putin, who has his... Okay, let's go back. Doesn't want negotiations because he doesn't want peace. Then why did you line up 120,000 troops on the border when they only had about 10,000 troops on the border? And why is Germany... Well, let's go right to that. Where does that go? Holy moly. Let's see this. Oh, here we go. Tanks to Ukraine. Military industrial complex. Biden Edmonds' decision to send new tanks to Ukraine offers huge payout to defense contractors. Of course it does. Germany approves sending heavy leopard tanks to Ukraine. No, Germany, you just can't stop, can you? Germany too approved. Uh, U.S. seriously considering sending Abram tanks. Poland seeks coalition to send leopard tanks. U.K. government planning to send tanks to Ukraine. So the Western world is building up all of this armament, sending them to Ukraine to put them on the front lines against Russia. Where did that go? Poland to almost double size of army build Europe's largest. That is the largest army of any strictly European nation. Russia and Turkey and then being, then being excluded. With armed forces consider, consisting of over 300,000 troops, up from the current level of 164,000, the Polish army will dwarf in comparison any of the four European members of the NATO quint. France, 205,000. Brit, 194,000. Germany, 184,000. Italy, 170,000. Now, based off of all this information, which side sounds like it's building up for war? Sounds like it's building up for an attack. Who's sending the tanks? Who's doubling the size of their armies? Who? You tell me. You make the decision. Again, you can click on all these links and you can do your own homework. Do your own homework, okay? Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. I think I have these uh, in order. Let's see. What are we doing on time here? Eight minutes. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from Redacted on, on YouTube. Reda Redacted is, is a great, great resource. Um, I'm only going to show maybe about uh, a two minutes here of what they have to say about the Ukraine. So, Which is Ukraine locking down Zelensky in the United States. So President Zelensky of Ukraine going to Washington, D.C. for the first time. The war now 300 days old in Ukraine since the start of the invasion uh, by Russian forces. But of course, it had been going on for eight years before that with the genocide that's been carried out in the Donbass by the Ukrainian soldiers with the help of NATO forces. That's been happening for, for eight years, lest we forget that. On this show, we actually pay attention to true history. So we'll have more on Zelensky's trip in a moment. But first, Ukraine is on the verge of collapse. Zelensky knows it. Uh, and the Ukrainians know it, but you're not allowed to talk about it. If you do, you get in trouble. You're not allowed to talk about it. Uh, the Ukrainian government is now enforcing stay-at-home orders. Do not leave your house. Lockdown? Sound familiar? You're not allowed to leave. I know you don't have electricity. You don't have wheat. You don't have water. You don't have heat. You are not allowed to leave your home. And I'm going to do one more thing real quick here from Redacted. This is this is a good show. The main difference. Here. Here's an example of soldiers uh, releasing videos showing that they are freezing and they're telling their own leaders that they will hunt them down. Not Putin. We're going to come after you, Zelensky and Zaluzny. So to be clear, Ukrainian soldiers telling their general we're coming after you. Watch. Хочу передати вітання пану Залужному та нашій зірці Зеленському. Що там тепло у вас? Може к нам приїдете сфоткатись? Може хоч тоді щось пожити привезете? 
На відео ви кажете, що все у вас добре, що у бійців немає потреби ні в чому. Які, блядь, бойові завдання? Нас норки вбивають, а застуда та гайморит. Де підхріплення? Командування тупо ігнори нас. Запам'ятайте. Ми обов'язково повернемося, ми виживемо. Тільки не заради перемоги, а для того, щоб повісити вас підарів в Києві на Майдані. І молитися, щоб росіяни до вас добрались першими. Ось один example. Ось один example. Ось один example. Uh, no more proxy war. This was, so does it look like the Ukraine is winning the war? Okay, does it look like Ukraine, who's trying to become a NATO member, is winning the war? The other thing I wanted to show you, where is it? Let me find it really quick. <laughs> this is German Chancellor <laughs> on war on Russia. Did, did they take this down yet? Oh, they must have. Come on. I'll find it. Uh, <laughs> I thought I had it. I thought I had it brought up. So. There's war on Russia. There it is. Oh, you can't escape, can you, sweetheart? No, you can't. Okay. Privacy warning. Watch here. Who cares? Yes, we have to do more to defend Ukraine. Yes, we have to do more also on tanks. But the most important and the crucial part is that we do it together and that we do not do the blame game in Europe because we are fighting a war against Russia and not against each other. Thank you. So, Germany's Annalena Baerbach just declared war against russia did she just say the quiet part out loud did she just admit that nato countries are fighting a war against russia and they're sending all of these tanks and all of these troops up against the russian border in the ukraine and poland just to get what must have something to do with uh let's see european union surviving without russian gas now that's another thing right germany um Germany is in really bad shape. Well, the entire EU is in really bad shape when it comes to natural gas. Um, do you think that NATO has the upper hand or do you think that Russia has the upper hand? I mean, Russia has all the natural gas that is supplying it, that all of these European countries with their heat sources and everything. Um, let's see. Is this the one I want? Natural gas. Here we go. This is the EU trade sanctions in response to the situation in Russia, okay? So, the importation of goods using Russian flag vessels, the purchase, import, or transport of natural gas, oil, including refined petroleum products, as well as titanium. So we're not going to import any of your natural gas using your ships. Uh, let's see. Um, trade sanctions adopted on the 8th, 8th of April, 2022. A new export ban of goods suited for use in liquefaction of natural gas. Again, what's the next one? Trains in the 21st of July. Additions to the list of goods suited for use in oil refining and liquefaction of natural gas whose export is prohibited. Okay, all right. So, and it goes on. And again, German, <laughs> German industry to pay 40 more. 40% more for energy than pre-crisis. Yeah, you still wanted to declare war against sweetheart, against Russia, sweetheart. It's early. I'm sorry. My word's all over the place. So that's um, a little bit of what's going on in Russia. Um, Russia, by all accounts, wanted to talk peace. NATO didn't want anything to do with that for whatever reason. Now, Germany and Poland and all of these other countries are basically admitting war against Russia. And then they are surprised when their prices on their natural gas that they import from Russia skyrockets. And it's going to be quite the winter of discontent. Maybe not this year, but next year it will be, okay? Um, there's, a, there's a couple. Oh, here we go. U.S. Safety Agency to consider ban on gas stoves amid health fears. You know, next time I might just paint clown makeup on my face, you know, because why not? 
Um, and there's a, there's a few other here. Um, this is about the Russia hoax at the Ron Paul Institute. There's a few others here. Uh, which one was this? Uh, Ukraine, the war that went wrong. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. Russia is so aggressive. Um, you know, look how close they put their country to all of our bases. Yeah. I mean, they're really attacking all of our bases all over the world, aren't they? Yeah. Good job. God damn, NATO. You're so dumb. What else do we got here? Oh, yeah. Here it was. <laughs> the German. Okay. So let's move on from that. All right. That's just your little brief on, on, the, on the global situation right now. Do I think that we're close to World War III? Not really. But um, if you want to research more of that, all of these links will be in the description below. Uh, by the way, go ahead and click like and subscribe and, and the notification bell and share this with someone who might find this information interesting uh, or just wants to point and laugh at me because uh, uh, my wife points and laughs at me all the time. That's Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, let's get this. Let's move on to something. Okay, this is the sports section. Watch. Inexperienced transfigure skater perform at the European Championship with hilarious results. And I do mean hilarious. Oh, God, I'm going to get you 20 minutes again. Let's look at this. A 59 year old male Finnish farmer took up figure skating at age 50, declared himself trans, and has now performed under the female name. Look, look at this crap. Why are we doing this? What the hell is going on in this world? Why do we tolerate this crap? So, so, so it has to be helped up by a real woman and isn't even quite sure where he is anymore. She, he, it. Good Lord. My God. Previous warnings that the trans athlete may not be qualified for the event were present, but strangely ignored. Good Lord. That brings me on to uh, athletes. This is the Washington Examiner. Athletes who have spoken out against trans in sports. Okay. The debate over whether transgender females should compete in women's sports has become a hotly contested issue amplified all, all the more so by the Olympics. Here are 10 award-winning athletes who have either wholly or partially spoken out against the inclusion of biological men in women's sports. Okay, let's see. Caitlyn Jenner, we all, uh, wasn't it Bruce, Bruce Jenner? So even a trans person is speaking out against this. Uh, Martina Navratilova. So, uh, I mean, that's some big names here. Uh, Paula Radcliffe, Kelly Holmes, Sharon Davies. You notice these are all women. Chelsea Mitchell. Well, except for, you know, Caitlin. Caitlin. Uh, Donna De Verona, Nancy Hogshead Machard, Donna Lopiano. So all of these women can see, well, except for, you know, they can see the forest from the trees. They understand that men are bigger and faster and stronger when it comes to things like sports and fighting. And, and if you don't believe me, um, let's take a look at this video real quick. In short, I'm saying pay these women. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> she makes shouldn't go elegant about it. You need to be paid because you command the same respect. The game is just as good. Okay. And then so just on that real quick. Me, you made and all your endorsements and everything and you guys owe about a hundred grand Let's each. see here. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta refresh this. We gotta The WNBA players wants the same rev split that the men get. What's the headline? It says we're not asking to get paid what the men get paid. We're asking to get paid the same percentage of revenue shared. Okay, which seems fair. We did a little bit of research on this. Uh, there's 12 players on a team. There's 12 total teams, so 144 total players. Mm -hmm. uh, the WNBA league loses $12 million a year. Mm -hmm. So if you divide $12 million by the 144 players, each player owes $83,000. <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> so if you guys want the same rev share, you're going to have to write a check for pretty much all the money you made 
and all your endorsements and everything. You guys owe about a hundred grand each. <laughs> Good job. Good job. And then here's the rest of that video of women or girls playing sports against men. Uh, I won't show a whole lot of it. There's there's dozens of these on YouTube. But say, My daughter caught her first catch of her football career today. Let's see what happens to Lily. Motion! The guy ran a 50 yards. Get him. Oh! oh Sorry. The guy ran a 50 yards. Get him. Oh! God. Men always say how women's soccer sucks. Then come to the field and try it with us. <laughs> oh my god, come on people, what are we doing here? Why do we continue to participate in this madness? Unbelievable. This is some old dude. This dude looks like he's a janitor. Boop. Alright, we don't have to keep showing it anymore. <laughs> in the starter's hands. Oh, man. So let's see okay, us you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, let me see. Oh, which brings me to this. If you hadn't heard of this, Loudoun County teen put under electronic monitoring before transgender bathroom assault. A Loudoun County, Virginia high school student identified by police as a male and accused of assaulting a girl in a school bathroom while wearing a skirt was reportedly under court-ordered electronic monitoring for a previous assault charge when the bathroom incident occurred okay so this is why we have to stop this freaking madness you have a boy a teenage boy who said oh one day i'm a girl decides to go into a girl's bathroom and assaults a teenager a teenage girl at a high school and if you don't know about this story the loudon county school district covered it up they didn't punish the kid they transferred him to a different school and they covered it up if you're a parent think long and hard about that do you want to continue to participate in this madness i don't think you do let's move on okay i'll get you out of here in kind of a timely manner i don't know you can just play this in the background while you're brushing your teeth drinking your coffee doing all that good stuff huh the WNBA thing's hilarious. Okay, on to the fun stuff. Aggressive turkey causes chaos in Minnesota neighborhood. <laughs> Residents of a Minnesota neighborhood said they are under a constant attack from an increasingly aggressive turkey that took up residence in the area. Rachel Gross said the turkey first showed up at the mobile home park in Coon Rapids as part of a flock in November 2021, but the bird stayed behind when the rest of his cohorts moved on a few weeks later. He woke up and chose violence. Well, neighbors in a Coon Rapids mobile home park are battling with a bird. They say this wild turkey has been terrorizing the neighborhood, even attacking people and chasing down but, cars. As WCCO's Kirsten Mitchell shows us, neighbors hope something can be done. Shoot it. We named it Reggie after the part in Turkey and Freebirds because we thought it was silly that it showed up right after Thanksgiving. Reggie. My cousin started calling her Gladys. Or Gladys. This turkey has literally taken over our life is no longer welcome in the neighborhood. It's fearless of water and seemingly people too. Get! Somebody help me! Somebody help me! Rachel Gross says she lives in fear. This turkey attacks me He's every single right day. There. Follows me, goes up my stairs and tries to get in my house. Oh my God. When I leave in the car, follows me in my car. The lone wild turkey has drawn blood pecked at tires, and chased cars. It gets on the back of my husband's truck and... Looks like dinner. Why, seriously, why hasn't anyone turned them into a main course yet? Good Lord. That's just, just, you didn't expect that headline, did you? No. Okay. Um. Let's see, where are we going? Let's go... For the first time since 1977, zero rhinos were poached in India's parks. That's great news. 
In May 2021, a new chief minister of the Indian state of Assam set out to thoroughly put it into poaching in the state's protected areas. Now, 20 months later, the forestry and police departments of the state have reported that 2022 saw no rhinos lost to poaching, the first time that's happened since 1977. That's wonderful news. I highly suggest you check it out. Uh, animals are wonderful. Um, yeah, I always love good animal stories. And let's see. Um, let's see. <laughs> let's see. This is the health news. I should have done this before the good news. I apologize. This is the health news. CDC aware of hundreds of safety signals for the COVID jab. What am I at here? Oh, this isn't the one I had. Where'd it go? Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, that, maybe this is it. Story at a glance. September 2022, the Epoch Times asked the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to release its proportional reporting ratio, PRR, and they refused. The CDC refused. So a FOIA request is now forced to release of this data, and they are stunning. The CDC's PRR monitoring has identified several hundred safety signals, Bell's palsy, blood clots, pulmonary embolism, and death in individuals 18 and older there are 770 safety signals and more than 500 of them 500 of them have a stronger safety signal than myocarditis and pericarditis and then it goes on to 12 to 17 there are 96 safety signals 5 to 11 year old group there are 66 including myocarditis pericarditis ventricular dysfunction cardiac valve and incompetency and then it goes on and on and on uh are you starting to get the picture yet folks hmm it's a uh, what, what's the what's the saying it, it, it's a vaccine so safe that you have to be forced to take it in order to keep your job or in the sake in the case of new zealand they will hunt you down look that guy up He's a douchebag. Um, guys, this this uh, this COVID thing is not going to get better, and it's not because of the reasons they're telling you. It's the reasons they're not telling you. Okay, let's um let's do something. Let's end on a high note. High note. That was not. Uh, let's see. Um, that wasn't the best way to end this. Where we're getting there though. Um. Let's see. I'll read you something. Sorry, I should have been much more prepared. I basically just woke up and started going. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. That wasn't very good, was it? No. Let's see. Let's get one more in here. Nah, I don't like that one either. You know what? I'll just finish one off the top of my head. <clears throat> um, the angle of my dangle is proportionate to the heat of my meat. Yeah. So this was a train wreck of <laughs> of, of a half an hour of, of stream video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm still playing with the format here. Um, I am going to start doing this on a daily basis, though. I'm trying to whittle this down again. I know I say that every single time, but uh, once or twice a week, I want to do about uh, maybe even an hour long expose on things like the next thing I got coming up is on uh, some child trafficking. Uh, that is a very, very, very important issue to a lot of people including me there's a lot of lines that you can cross messing with children is not one of them so be on the lookout for that within the next week or so um but i will be back tomorrow morning 
um, to bring you the news, hopefully briefly, um, even if you consider this news or if you just consider this uh, pointing and laughing at some idiot on the Internet. That's fine, too. Remember to hit like and subscribe and share and the notification bell and everything. And uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm very, very grateful you decided to spend your morning with me. And um, y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I will see you later. Bye.